Hey guys, welcome to our Kiwi garden. It's been a hot minute. It hasn't been hot, it's been cold, it's been winter. Um, and yeah, I haven't really had much uh, juju to get out into the garden. Um, mostly because it's been really, really rainy and we've had a garden that has just turned into mud. So the garden and the backyard are looking a little bit worse for wear, but you know, it's a beautiful day today. We've got some really fine weather in the forecast. So I thought, why not? Um, show you guys where we're at, how the gardens come through winter, and yeah, what's what. So turn around and show you what we're dealing with right now. This is the backyard. You see the addition of some fun steps. You may have seen them before. Um, we need to lift them a little bit because they sunk in the um, rest of the mud. Um, here is sleeper bed number one. Uh, hasn't done too badly. Just got a few winter greens in there. Number two some lettuce we've actually been picking on this lettuce heaps and it's funny because it's the first time we've actually really had a use for lettuce we've been making a lot of smash burgers and um fun things like that so it's been really cool to start using our lettuce not sitting a bolt like these guys i have a little cauliflower ready to go tom's been picking off this broccoli and a cabbage and some bok choy that <laughs> tom forgot to eat before it bolted um, these are spring onions that have bolted so I need to go and cut them back and they'll flush away again and I've got some red shots there um, ready to use so yeah this is where the dahlias were got some lavender out true to form I did not cut that back I'm going to need to do that at some point and a potato I planted four seed potatoes that I hadn't sprouted um, and only one has uh, come through. This is where I had some potatoes. They are no longer there because we dug them up. This is the leftover zinnias. Some seed heads on there. Maybe they'll self seed. I don't know. Here are, there are some more potatoes um, in under these guys and under here that I need to pull out and I replanted or transplanted some rhubarb. Um, this is a really old heritage um, corn from my mum uh, and dad that they pulled out of their garden for me and you can see some new growth on there I need to really get in there and give it some food um, to get it going but yeah I'm pretty excited about that more lavender and a badly neglected <laughs> strawberry planter um, these guys are coming back which is amazing and I need to kind of maybe lift these ones and fill this back up feed them and get them going Funny thing about strawberries here in New Zealand at the moment, um, because of our really, really wet um, winter and kind of previous into summer. What is the dog doing? I'll show you what she's being a nutter about in a moment. Um, but because of all that, a lot of the um, strawberry, I guess, growers, propagators, I don't mean propagators, anyway, we have a really huge shortage of strawberry plants. Um, the commercial market has been supplied first um so yeah <laughs> if we've got them in our garden we need to lift them take care of them um or you're going to pay about nine dollars per strawberry plant in a store at the moment to replenish your own um, stores so yeah if you can get your hands on them so yeah i'll take care of those ones later on i'll show you the next part of the garden you can see here is the hoop house it's done really well a it didn't blow over b it didn't rip the dog hasn't tried to put her face through it and I'll show you what's in here. And to be honest, I have kind of neglected it. I've opened it every now and then. I have given it some water and some feeding. But these guys went it over in our hoop house. This down here is my pink habanero and it is full of little new growth sprouts. I've put a sky hot chili in here. I have uh, an Indian uh, jo joala um, chili but that got eaten by something I need to come out here and find out what's in here at night and yeah we've got these guys that are really just ready to be fed and trimmed up um, I will keep the cover on it is only the middle of September so we do have some time um, to you know have some more frosts or you know late cold snaps but yeah these guys have done really well under the hoop house so pretty proud of this experiment and here are the other raised beds um, this one here is just really come away. Um, our days are getting longer, so this gets more sun, and the sun has more heat. So these um, lovely winter greens are just going to take off. We've got some spinach in here, some, uh, so this is the uh, spinach, perpetual spinach, this is Cavallo Nero, 
and some silver beet, um, which Tom has been eating off. This is either a broccoli or a cauliflower. I still don't know the difference. Purple curly leaf kale. Uh, some snow peas that are doing really well, just waiting for the flowers to come out. Uh, some more Cavallonero over there. Got some beetroot. They haven't really done much. A beautiful red cabbage. Not very big. More beetroot with lots of foliage. In here I planted some snow peas a week ago, so hopefully they'll be up and through soon. Uh, a new uh, stand of lettuce and some more bok choy. Hopefully we'll eat this before it goes to seed. Super easy to grow. This is the corner bed, the one that doesn't get a heck of a lot of sun in the winter, um, but as the sun is a little bit hotter and we have cleared out. So there's lots of overhead sun. I'm feeling that this might be a good bed for summer. In the back there we have some, I don't know, I think I put maybe Brussels sprouts, maybe, I don't know, there's something in the back there. Got the worm farm still going well here. <laughs> Dio and Finney doing their thing. I'm trying to get it away from the... Do you want to say what we've got in here, Finney? Little chicks. And we've yeah. Got some it's a broody hen. Well, she was broody, and now she is just being a mama hen. So we have a brown shaver commercial hybrid here in New Zealand, crossed with whatever rooster is on Robin's farm. And we have two leghorns in there with her as well. And um, upstairs we also have some more babies. Maybe I'll show you them later. This is the garlic bed. Um, mm, I'm not sure whether the marks are on here. I'm not sure whether you can see. Um, the marks on here are early signs of rust or that just needs feeding. I'm having another look and I think actually on here, um, if you can see by my thumb, if it's focusing for you. I think that is the early sign of rust. So I can probably chop them off, um, feed them, maybe it'll make them a little bit more um, resilient. I don't know, we'll give it a go. These were planted very early, hoping to get them to a point where we wouldn't be affected by rust, but I don't think that's really gonna make a difference. A Gonesee cauliflower, some more brassicas, and some silver beet that Tom has finished eating off. And here are our onions. Here we have the winter potato sowing. Um, those two big ones on the end are empty. We have harvested those. We had loads of um, little taters. They weren't uh, big by any score of the imagination, but um, we washed them and we roasted them and they tasted good. I've still got uh, two bags here that have got spuds in them. This one here is still growing. Um, I think this was the bag that had the weakest shoot and leftovers. So we'll see how that one fares. Um, yeah, it's been in the spot all through winter. And here we have the muddy pathway back you up <laughs> this is what's happened there's just mud for Africa um, it's just ridiculous so it's and been a very clay. muddy and some clay yeah we have lovely clay soil here don't we Finny here are our here are our pots that are flanking the gate that Finny wanted us to do um, they look really pretty I think this one here you can definitely see this one here gets way more sun than this one, so the violas are a little bit more developed on the other side. But yeah, in a sea of mud, some pretty stuff. And over here is to escape chickens. This is butter and toast. Butter, this one here is butter here, and this one here is toast. These guys keep getting out, so I know where it is. We've got to go and figure that out so we can stop them getting out. But they're, they're pretty easy to get back in. Shall we go through, Finny? Okay. Why do they keep the snake? Because they're adventure chickens. Through you go. Butter. You got butter? Hey, butter. If we open the door. No, guys. In you go, ladies. Turn around, toast. In you go, toast. There we go. Thanks, Finny. <laughs> Funny ladies. So, yeah, the girls have been going really well. The chicken coop is still standing. 
and they've got a lovely outdoor area uh, down in here. They're really friendly. And, and we're staining it. Yeah, I started staining it yesterday and they watched me the whole time. It's a little bit disconcerting that you stand there and stare at me, but that's okay. So down here, this is the clearing out that we started um, at the beginning of uh, autumn and it's gone really well. We've got some more to get in here and do. It is going to be infinitely easier and safer now that it is far less muddy and you can see over here maybe in the trees um, these ones here it smells beautiful but it's a Chinese jasmine um, it's absolutely just a ferocious weed but it's one that smells amazing so if somewhere I can get like a stand of it that I can keep it under control um, that would be awesome because the smell is just beautiful in the early morning and late in the evening but yeah we've kind of got to get rid of it um, this is one of my favorite views just here Standing on the log and looking. Yeah. It's just like forest, forest, even though that's the Easter it basically looks like a farm. It does, hey, and it just makes us makes me feel like I've got so much more um, open space around me than in reality we have, considering we live in suburbia. But yeah, when all this is gone, it's just going to be even much nicer. Um, we've got a We're little gonna log make here. Our own little, like, um, Huts down here. Oh, are you? You've got plans. So Tom put a, a log in there. We did have um, some pansies and some grass, but as you can see, the girls can get right through there. And Finney's um, primrose oh. needs some water and oh. to stop being pecked. What are they doing? Oh, she'll, are you going to help her with her foot? Her fo she'll get it through. So, yeah, that's. The state of the garden at the moment. Uh, that's Robin's bunny. We're taking care of two of Robin's rabbits, um, two guinea pigs, uh, while he's in Europe. So uh, currently on this very suburban piece of land, we have seven chickens, uh, nine baby chicks, a dog, two bunnies, and two guinea pigs. Oh, and two cats. And later a lizard or a salamander. Oh, is that your choice, is it? Ah, huh, okay, cool. So that's where this kiwi garden is up to at the moment. Um, I've got some uh, very early tomatoes, some beetroot, um, some really cool new cauliflower um, that are they're called eye colly, and they basically have cauliflowers, um, cauliflower, cauliflower, they have mini cauliflower heads that grow almost like sprouting broccoli. Um, so you don't have to just pick one big head. The more you pick, the more they'll sprout. Um, so I'm looking forward to putting those in. Um, they're a new release here in um, New Zealand from Mitre 10. Um, I've got some, yeah, three types of tomatoes, collies, broccoli, uh, broccoli, <laughs> beetroot for Tom, and some more beans, or some beans to put in. So I'm looking forward to getting that in and actually doing something in the garden. So yeah, I'm going to get some planting done and I'll show you where I put things afterwards. And I've got, I'm working on my own mini pot. Your pretty little flower arrangement? Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to show everyone when you're done? Yes. Awesome. This is my pot. What have you got in there? So... An ant? Oh, an ant. <laughs> a decorative ant. I think it's still on. It's okay. Um, a daisy? An osteopermin? A um, lavender? Yep. Whatever this is. That is a... Oh, I forget. Cyclone? Yes! Good job! And then another osteopermin? Nice work. And a d deaf daffodil. <laughs> now I just need to find a place. Okay. <laughs> See you later. See you. I found a snow pea. The first snow pea. The bottom is really, really raggedy. I didn't think they were going to come to much, but we've got some pretty flowers, and yeah, a snow pea. So I put a tomato cage in. Finney and I did this and yeah, we're going to pop the tomato in the bottom. Here it is, ready to go. Leave the little stake in there, got some fertilizer and yeah, grow baby grow. Now where to plant beans? Got some dwarf butter beans, the bush beans so you can put between four 
and six per square foot. This bed here is um, two square foot wide, so I'm gonna plant them just in here. I'll go get my other stuff. Baby beet hall. Yay. Alrighty, so in here I've got four square feet. Um, these are the uh, eye stem cauliflower. I think eye stem might be like individual stem. So if you can see on there, instead of one plain broccoli head, you get multiple. Same idea of sprouting broccoli, like I mentioned before, but don't they look cool? So yeah, I'm gonna put one in here. Um, I'm gonna follow the normal um, square foot planting rules for cauliflower, which is one per square foot. We've got a dynamo grafted tomato. So I'm gonna put that on the other side and yeah, that'll be two more things in this garden, which hopefully will love its life. Okay, so we'll see how they go. This one here has a full square foot of growing space and I've got three in two square feet. I'm sure there's a way I could have done this better. You know what, how I always kind of said, I'm not going to put the markings on here so that I don't feel restricted in my square foot planting. Maybe I'll do that this season. It might just help use the right space for the right things. Um, so yeah, I think I might try and do that as my next garden project. But to be honest, today was really about getting out into the garden, um, getting some dirty things again, and just enjoying the sun and doing a little bit of stuff that I've really missed doing over winter. Um, always feel a lot better after I've been out here, and I woke up in a bit of a funk this morning, so I'm feeling a lot better after being out here. Got some more stuff to plant, so we'll get after it. All right, so everything's in the ground, um, everything's been watered in, and bok choy with a little row of beetroot here. Some peas hopefully coming up, more beetroot. That's the bush beans we put in, and that's the ice stem broccoli. No, ice stem cauliflower, if I forget, that's over here. And a tomato. And over here, some beetroot. And I popped a Sunshine 100 tomato, so like a cherry tomato, over in this one. This is this really nice corner bed that's just doing an amazing job. And one more ice cream broccoli down there. So, no, my goodness, it's cauliflower. What is wrong with me? So, yeah, Woo. afternoon sun and it's windy today. So, yeah, that's all done. And I'm kind of really, actually not kind of, I'm really happy to have gotten out here and gotten everything planted and got some dirt under my nails and just had a bit of like time in my head um, just to not think about life in general and things like that um, and dream about summer which is bearing down on us very quickly. So yeah, um, thanks for joining, it's been a while um, and if you've watched the end of the video um, maybe welcome to spring, welcome to summer, if you're heading into autumn in your um, part of the world um, I'd love to hear about what your favourite part of your favourite season is. Mine is definitely spring. If you could like the video and even think about subscribing, that would be really awesome. kind of gives me a bit of a boost each time I get someone new who says, hey, I'd like to see more of what you're doing. Um, and yeah, pop your favourite season down below and what you love about it. Uh, we can compare notes. Bye, guys.